Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be discussing loading tools in the spindle of our vertical machining centers. We're going to be discussing taking tool length offsets and we're going to be discussing how to verify our tool length offsets. Um, before we get started, I just want to say that there are multiple ways you can tank tool length offsets and what we are doing in this video may not be the same way that you are doing it in the classroom. So for example, the way that I am going to be showing um, how to take tool length offsets in this video is all of our tool lengths are based from the tip of our tool when it's in the spindle to a theoretical plane and then we adjust from our theoretical plane to the top surface of our workpiece. Another style of way that I know professors take their tool length offsets is um, they use their probe and that becomes their tool zero, and then everything is based off of that tool length. Um, another way that is commonly practiced is we measure the distance between the bottom of our spindle and the top of our workpiece. That becomes our fixture offset in Z, and then our tool length becomes our actual length of our tool. Really what I want to get across is that there are multiple variety of ways that you can take your tool lengths and that's fine. Um, just please make sure that you are doing it the way that your practical professor has shown you and it may be different uh, than this video. So the nice thing about our vertical machining center is we have an automatic tool changer. It is this here off on the left hand side. In fact, this is the carousel. Our machines here at Fanshawe can hold up to 20 tools at any given time as well as hold those tool length offsets. That means that we can call up our tool at any point and read our tool length offset and that will tell us the distance from our tool to the top of our workpiece. Now before we get too um, in depth, I do want to be honest with you and say that for this video, we have disabled some of the safety features of this machine to allow you to view what we are doing a little easier. It is very important that when you are in the lab, we do not tamper um, with any of the safety devices on these machines. Again, we have done this strictly for an educational purpose. It is very important that all guards and safety devices are in place um, when we are operating this equipment. All right, let's get started. So the first thing that we're gonna go over is looking at our screen. And you're gonna see that right now, we have T4 is in our spindle. That means that right now, tool number four is in the spindle of my machine. And I know we don't have a tool in there, but just for our imagination, let's pretend there's something in here. We're gonna to get to the process of loading tools. Um, but right now, it thinks that tool four is in our spindle. If we want to do a tool change. It's really nice and easy. We can do it straight from the controller and you're gonna be able to see over my shoulder the operations the machine is going to take. So if I wanted to put, say, tool eight into the spindle, I can press T and you will see that it highlights my T value. I can press eight. You will see it has changed us from T4 to T8. And now if I press cycle start, it will perform our tool change operation. Remember, cycle start causes the machine to perform a motion. Enter is how we input information. So we don't want to enter, we want to hit cycle start to perform our tool change. So when I press this, you will see that our machine or our Z-axis goes to our machine home position. Our table returns to the right hand side. Our carousel moves into our spindle. Our carousel rotates to the next tool location and our spindle comes down at our new tool. So that is the process um, the machine moves when it is doing a tool change. So one thing that's really important and I want to mention, anytime we are changing a tool, we have to be patient. So if I want to change this from T8 to T6, we need to wait for this to now register as T6 before we touch any buttons on the machine. Um, the reason we wanna do that is because the machine has to go through all the processes and register that tool six is now officially in the spindle. And there is a lag 
between when we see the machine stop and when this will convert to the proper tool that is in the spindle. So please, please, please be patient. Um, this gets jammed quite easily and it's really annoying to have to fix. So just make sure you're taking your time and we're not rushing. So I'm just gonna demonstrate that right now. If we press T6 and then cycle start, we'll perform the tool change operation. So again, our carousel moves over, our spindle moves up, we move the tool six, we come down, our carousel moves out of the way. So it may look like we finished moving Please just make sure that we wait until our NC controller registers that tool six is in fact in the spindle before we start touching anything or moving our axes, okay? It's really important that we show some patience. So that's how we perform a tool change to select whatever pocket we wanna insert our tools into. You're gonna be given a tool list um, that we want you to follow and you will have to input your tools in that correct um, position. So I'm just going to start at T6. We're already there. Now we want to go into the process of loading our tools into the spindle. So I already have a couple tools built here. You can see I have a 5 16 drill and I'm going to make sure that I'm using the proper pull stud. So this is the BT40 pull stud. And I can look over here and see that this is the machine that requires the BT40 tool holder. Make sure that when you're on this machine or that you're, you know, you're just taking a really quick glimpse before you load any tools into the machine that you are using the proper pull stud. Now loading tools over on the CNC side is a little bit different than loading them over on the manual machine side. On the manual machine side, you know, we still put our tools in place. We still align our drive lugs. You will see that our tools still have drive lugs on them, as well as our spindle also has drive lugs. We still want to align those like we would on the manual machining side. The big difference is on the manual machining side, we have two buttons. We have the blue button, which is on, which drives our tool up, and we have the red button off, which moves our tool down or, or releases our tool. On a CNC machining center, we only have one button. It is this button here, our green um, clamp and unclamp. And the way that the, the CNC machining tool changer works is when we are not pressing the button, our tool changer um, arm is up and the mouth that clamps on our pull stud is closed. So right now that would be the way that our spindle is sitting. As soon as we push the button, we have to push and hold and that lowers our drawbar as well as opens the mouth in order for us to put our tool in place. We have to push and hold the button the entire time to hold that mouth open on the end of our drawbar. After we let go of the button, that is when our mouth closes around our pull stud and draws our tool up into the spindle. So the reason I say this is because a lot of times what I found students were doing was pushing this button really quickly, like we would over on the manual machining side, and that's not what we wanna do here. On the CNC side, you wanna push and hold, and you're gonna hear air is coming out through the bottom of the spindle. That is telling us that our spindle is open, and the reason it blows air is, think of it like a natural immune system for the machine. When we are working in machining, um, there's a lot of coolant mist and maybe chips and small particles floating around inside the machine. That burst of air makes sure that no, um, no small particulate will get around the taper of the tool. So, in order to load your tool properly, we want to push and hold, wait until you hear the air. We want to align our tool to the drive plugs, and then we let go of our button. As soon as we let go of our button, our drawbar and our clamp will pull our tool up and in, and you will see that now my tool is being held in place. I can spin this around, and I can see everything is rotating really true, um, and, I'm, and I know that this tool is being held accurately in place.
if at any time you want to remove a tool from your spindle, the very first thing you need to know is that the tool has to be in the spindle of your machine. You cannot remove tools from the carousel of our tool chain. And it's the exact same way you put the tool in. You want to make sure you're holding on to the tool really firmly. We push and hold our green button and the tool will automatically pop out. The reason that you want to be holding on to your tool is because if you just push this button, the tool will drop, hit up against the table, and chances are we'll be replacing a drill or an end mill, and we really don't want to do that if we don't have to.